today is a Mac and Jack clone. Um, gonna do, it's gonna be a 10 gallon into the fermenter, so uh, I've got uh, 14 gallons in there now. Um, just hit my strike temperature. Uh, so I'm gonna about to put the grain in. Uh, electric brew in the bag. Got the element down there, so it's a 5500 watt element. Running 240 uh, volt off uh, 230 amp fuses. Um, got the strainer pipe, got the bag and the strainer ready to go. Just about to dump it in now. I've got my grain. Uh, a lot of grain tonight. <clears throat> Bunch of grain tonight. Two, two tubs worth of grain tonight. Um, we've got in the tub going in there, I've got 20 pounds of Marisota, 2 pounds of Munich malt, uh, 1 pound of caramel crystal, it's not 50 actually, it's 35. It's going to go 80, I'll go 80 next time, I'll try this one out the way it goes. pound and a half of uh, white wheat malt, uh, that'll get that cloudy appearance and then some special B, uh, just 6 ounces of special B. Hops for tonight are uh, Cascade. Got an ounce that goes in at 60 minutes. And then we've got uh, another ounce of um, Centennial and that'll go in at 10 minutes to boil and then five minutes to boil. And then also, I love these uh, packs are great. Um, oh, my ones. Yeah, there we go. Cascade and that'll, these will go in the dry hop. So I'm going to have two five uh, gallon carboys and I'll dry hop these five to seven days uh, in the fermenting process and dry hop it. It's typical for the Mac and Jack uh, recipe. So uh, I've got my additions, everything ready, everything sanitized uh, at this end, ready to go. So I'm uh, going to put the grain in now. And we're going to start the mash, and the mash today is a 60 minute mash. Okay, we're mashed in. It's all in there, we're after uh, 155. Hang on, let me set that again. 155. I've got the uh, ink bird on though, so uh, the temperature's going to come up uh, when I start the recirc. Yeah, so I drop down a little bit. Okay, so drop down a little bit. Um, Got to get that back up again. So let's shut the top on. And uh, turn the recirc engine on. There she goes. And uh, get that recirculating in there. Yeah, it's recirculating pretty well. Great, nice, nice flow in there. Oh, she's on and revving. Okay, so uh, what we'll do is uh, we'll start our timer and um, 60 minute mash at 155 and then I'll mash out at 170. Okay, so uh, just mashed out up to 170. Um, now it's uh, just lifted the basket up and we're draining it out now. Draining out pretty well. Um, mash went really well. No uh, problem, everything. A lot of sticky, a lot of sticky sugar. It's great. So what we're going to do now is going to uh, bump on the 240 volt, uh, crank it right up, and get it boiling, and just leave this draining for a little while. And then I'll uh, probably, I might even sparge some stuff through there um, to make sure I've got enough to boil down to 10 gallons. Uh, and we're we're going to do a uh, 60 minute 60 minute boil. Yeah. Okay, so the uh, drained out all the uh, work from the grain and uh, just turned it on to uh, full power. Let me just double check that. Yeah, she's on full power now, uh, getting it up to the boil. Shouldn't take too long. Um, 90 minute boil. Uh, first addition will be the centennial, two ounces, um, 60 minute, and then we'll do uh, cascade. 10 and then 5 and then a dry hop. Dry hop it as well. Here's the grain. Um, it, it's, uh, it, looks, it feels good. It doesn't feel you know sticky. Uh, one of the things with the brew in the bag is it's you know, not as efficient as uh, sparging. 
through the grain bed using it as a as a well a um, sponge really um, one, one thing I like to do is just taste it just to see if it's still sweet mm. and um, it's not really sweet at all which is good uh, it makes me um, understand how much more I'm getting off the, the sugars off the grain um, and, and, and work my efficiency out for trying to adapt normal recipes into a brew in the bag recipe where it's all in one. I did uh, put another gallon of water over it. I uh, run through the bag while it was hanging here um, just to get it up to the boil volume that I needed. I needed another gallon um, and that'll boil down to uh, about 11 uh, gallons now and then that'll be uh, five and a half gallons per uh, Per fermenter, so that's where I need it to be. Okay, so um, wait for it to get up to boil and then we'll do our first addition. And the, the pops will be going into a little bag, a uh, strainer bag. I won't let them put in there. I just like to cut some of the crud out of the wort um, and keep it going. Here's some of the beer that I bottled last. This is the Dunkel Weizen. I'm not sure if you can see the color through there. Oh, yeah, you can see the color through there. It's a, it's a beautiful, reddy brown. Um, color, it, um, it's already cleared out really well. It's, uh, it's been in the bottle a week. I've got some in the keg as well, keg conditioning out the back, so I'll we'll do a taste test on the other original video. That video will come out uh, probably next week, which will, when, when you watch the videos, it seems like they take just, uh, you know, 15 to 20 minutes. I try and work them out in, but actually they take three weeks from start to finish, so uh, it takes a little bit of time to get them up, but they're fun to watch. Okay. Uh, See so you in the just boil. Here, boil. Uh, got a nice boil there. Uh, this is probably the most water I've ever had in this uh, 16 gallon pot. Um, where am I? I'm on two. So it's uh, it's boiling and beautiful boil just on two. So um, very happy with the electricity with this much water. I don't turn it up much higher than that, but obviously I don't need to. First hop addition, two ounces of Centennial and they go in for the 60 minutes. We also uh, took a pre-boil uh, gravity and it's looking like it's about 265 let's say 65 which uh, obviously got the efficiency um, with that recirculation pump uh, down pretty well. Uh, I'll have to Consider doing the adding a gallon of water over the top of the basket when I uh, lift the cage out as a sparge just to get the residual sugars out of the bag. But um, great, that's good. All right, so uh, time is set and we're off. Also, I've got my wheat, yeast out here too. So I've got two packets of the um, uh, the, the 1098, the Y yeast, uh, both pack. They're both cracked because I'm going to be doing two carboys. Uh, or two fermenters, five gallons each, so uh, one for each. Pop bags. All right, it's left in the boil. Uh, got our uh, get our chiller going in now. Sanitize that. Make sure we don't get on uh, don't get on those hoppies. Pallets, man, they they don't they they just swell up so much. That's uh, two ounces there of. Uh, Centennial and they just swell up huge. All right, so let's get this wort chiller in here and then second last edition of hops and this is uh, Half a ounce of cascade and then we've got another ounce of cascade That'll go in five minutes um, Got our carboys Sanitized. Oh, we're going to use the plastic fermenters on these ones because I'm going to dry hop them with uh, another an ounce a piece, about five to seven, probably five days in. I put it in. I leave it in there for five days before I pull them out, and it's just too hard. I got this one sanitized, ready to go, and then realised that yeah, it's just too hard to get the um, the hops out. I'm using not pellets. I'm using uh, yes, yeah, solid hops. So too hard to get them out of the neck. So. Got the last hop edition ready to go. The yeast ready to go. I'm just about to put in. Uh, a fluck tablet. Uh, this one, you know, is an unfiltered beer as well. The Mac and Jack. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, but it's great up here in the northwest. 
but it's just force of habit. I like to put some in there just to clear it a little bit and then some yeast nutrient as well. Okie dokie, getting down to the business end. Okay, so she's uh, boils finished, cool down, uh, splitting it between two, two carboys. I uh, still can't tell how much I've got, so I'll put four in that one and I'll, uh, I'll take this one up to five and then see if I can, where I get five and find out what my boil volume uh, went down to. Take a final reading and uh, and go from there about my yeast. I um, it's one of these just paint strainer bucket um, that I sanitise and I just use to run the work through. Um, it just takes a little bit more of that crud out before you get it into the uh, into the fermenter and then and I'll, and it aerates it as well on the way through. So it sort of does two the job of two things at once. Uh, if I can get a little bit more of the crap out of there before I get it into the jug. I'm always happy about that. Okay, so we're four gallons there now. Four gallons there now. Uh, we're getting down. So yeah, might go ten, a bit under ten, but maybe even nine. Oh, so here we go. Alrighty. Uh, at one seventy-two. Uh, which is good, 172. Rightio, so we're uh, five days uh, in on the fermentation. Um, so time to add the dry hops. So uh, got the two fives, one up there and one down here. Uh, been keeping them on uh, 68. And I just thought I'd take a, temp a, um, a gravity reading as well. I'm trying to get it down to 1020 um, or 1017. I like it, it's trying to be as sweet as this Manny's. It's, it's in about range for the style. So not far off, very close. Obviously, everything's uh, everything's uh, incredibly sanitised at this stage. Opening it up uh, halfway through is is always uh, you know a little tricky, and then obviously there's room for error, and, and we can get contaminants in there, and it's something you don't need. These are um, that's an ounce of Saz hops in there, straight into a uh, gallon strainer bag from a paint strainer bag, and that's sanitised too. I soak them both in star sand for five minutes. Give them a bit of a shake and then put the hops in there straight from the bag. Straight in there and uh, they'll stay in there for seven days. Take them out, we'll let it sit for another three or four days and then I'll go into a keg and uh, leave it in the keg for 14 days to keg condition. Hey, so this is the, uh, the African Amber that I did the clone of like a Mac and Jack. Uh, it's been conditioned for uh, two weeks in the keg. They said two weeks. I checked it a little earlier. I checked it after one week. But the, um, the hops, uh, the dry hopping, they uh, said it takes a little while to calm it down. And, and it did. It was a little bit pungent the first week. Um, but now, but now, like, the smell is uh, beautiful. It, like, the smell of malt. And then you can smell that uh, cascade coming through. And the taste is just beautiful. I think it's, uh, I think you could do with another week. And I think next time I do it, I think I'll use a little less on the dry hop. Um, I think the boil uh, and bitter and the, uh, you know, and the aroma on the end is perfect. But I think I'll use half the amount for the um, dry hop. Just so that uh, the, the, the aroma um, the, just subsides a little bit. It's a little bit too strong, and I don't like to wait three or four weeks before I uh, to keg condition something before I drink it. And I bottled a, a half, I bottled five gallons of this, and I've got five gallons in the keg. Um, but you know, definitely beautiful, uh, easy drinking. And you know, we're moving into uh, the cooler weather here now in Seattle. And this one I used was just a standard recipe, and I did it in the boil in the bag. Um, crazy crazy good efficiency it was about 70 79 80 percent so it came out um at, at well over six percent uh which is it's high but you know this time of the year these uh, uh leaf raking beers let's say uh it's probably perfect um so i've got another one coming up soon uh, i've got some cider i'm doing as well dry hop and you'll see that video soon too and then uh Going to do a fruit beer. Never done a fruit beer before, so I'm going to do one of those too. So, cheers.